Okay, let's uh, let's get going. It's uh, it's one minute past ten, and these are a quite uh, punchy session. So uh, let us get going. Um, firstly, good morning, everybody, and, uh, and and a warm welcome on this lovely rainy uh, Wednesday morning. Thank you all very much for joining. And this is our second webinar in this series as we start exploring how text technology can help you. A um, couple of quick housekeeping points, just uh, so that we're clear on what's out, what we need to do today. The session is going to be recorded. It will be 30 minutes. Uh, it will be emailed around at the end. So if uh, very happy for you to share that with any interested colleagues. There'll be an opportunity to ask questions at the end. Um, please do ask those in the Q&A option of Zoom rather than the chat, just so that we can try and get through as many of those Q&A points as we can. Uh, there will be an opportunity for a follow-up session for those that are interested in hearing a little bit more from our guest speaker today. Uh, within the next couple of weeks so please do look out for those notes so without further ado let's get into the main session uh, my name is ian borden i'm the tax partner at bdo head of our tax performance engineering group i've been working in tax technology and transformation for the last 25 years work with a huge group a uh, huge range of organizations in lots and lots of different sectors and the purpose of this series today is to help address the statement that i hear most i didn't know technology could do that and um, we wanted to run this series to help raise awareness of the great options that are available, the great vendors, the great uh, process changes that can help you make everyday tasks and hopefully make your lives a little bit easier and more compliant. So each of these 30, se 30 minute sessions is going to focus on a different topic. Uh, our first one last time started with indirect tax and we are uh, bouncing back to direct tax this time and delighted to be joined by Russell Gammon from Tax Systems. And tax systems, for those that don't know, are the creators of Alpha Tax, amongst other things. So Russell's here today to introduce uh, tax systems, give us an idea of what they're up to, and some exciting changes that tax systems customers are hopefully going to see in the future. So thanks ever so much for joining us, Russell. Thanks for having me. Uh, just before we get to Russell, um, I just what well, the the point of these sessions is usually a quick glance at the market and what we're seeing out there. There's a couple of things that we're seeing from a practical perspective at this time of year. Um, as organizations that are December year end are getting ready to file their tax returns and organizations are starting to think about what's going to happen for their year end. So we're getting quite a lot of questions and queries through in terms of, am I ready for my tax return? You know, is my data in the state that I can be able to use? Uh, and the similar questions around, is my spreadsheet going to stand up for another year end? So both great questions and probably ones that we'll tackle at another session. Um, and But if there is any organizations that are facing those challenges, please do, let us know. We're happy to have some conversations. But the point of the, uh, the navel gazing today was a little bit more on strategic topics that are on the horizon and are worth uh, organizations knowing. So on screen, hopefully I've got a, a couple of, I've got one slide just with a couple of areas and I'm sure you're all uh, pretty familiar with these, but just to give you a bit of a, an update into what's happening in both of these two areas and, and, and things that groups are thinking about. Um, so MTD for CT, uh, we've all lived through and hopefully survived MTD for VAT. Um, I'm sure many of you now are aware that the MTD for CT is coming in 2024 as a pilot and 2026 as a go live there are rumors that those dates may move back a little bit not that is not confirmed yet and they are still the dates that people are targeting but there is a rumor that that might slip ultimately for mtd for ct there's a lot of similarities between the vat side the increased frequency of returns for those that are outside of the quips or super quips process and a couple of the biggest changes in terms of the possibility of your corporate tax returns being submitted at the same time your financial statements get submitted. And it's bringing into clear focus the need for almost the tax provision calculations and they're becoming much more part and parcel of the day to day and not just a, a half year finger in the air and then a detailed year end. Um, so there's some interesting changes on that CT, uh, MTD for CT horizon. Organizations are starting to look at it and, and the point of raising it now, and I know a number will be thinking that it's a little bit early, is the fact that any organization that's going through any element of finance transformation or system change, it is worth getting that on the agenda because of the digital linkage of data and the digital records. It's worth making sure that you are uh, putting that on the requirements list for any new systems that are there and making sure that anything you're building is thinking about this digitization and what it means. 
Um, the second point, and a one that's a little bit sooner and a little bit closer on that horizon, is the pillar two side of things. We are starting to see organisations look at doing elements of assessments to understand what the impact is likely to be. I think the key point on this is to be aware that even if you're in lots and lots of high tax jurisdictions, we've come across a few scenarios where groups still fall foul on the basis of the level of adjustments that get pushed through. So um, it is worth starting the thinking around that process and work out what the impact is going to be for you. We did an exercise recently to start identifying all of the various data points that you're going to need and where groups are going to get them from. And it is quite a list. So please start early. I know there are still quite a lot of unknowns in this Pillar 2 space. The Accounting Standards Board are meeting next week to try and work out whether the Pillar 2 taxes are going to be classed as deferred tax. Um, so there's still quite a lot of moving parts on that. But uh, the good news is a number of the leading IT vendors are starting to produce some solutions in this area. We've seen some early demos. So we'll be able to kind of give you some insight into what's going on. So just a very quick uh, gaze into what's coming over the hill very, very soon and wanted to make sure that you're aware. So. That's enough for me for the moment. Uh, the reason you're here today is to hear from Russell and uh, find out a little bit more about uh, tax systems and, and find out a little bit about how uh, their, their organisation can help you. So, Russell, can I hand over to you, please? Yes, you can. Thank you very much, um, Ian. Let's skip on um, just a couple of slides. So just as we've um, just as an introduction, my name is Russell. I've worked for tax systems now for about two and a half years. Uh, my role in the business is all around um, solutions, what we're building, why we're building it. Um, for the last two and a half years, that primarily has been focused on um, alpha tax and moving that to the cloud. And that's what I'm going to spend a good amount of time today talking you through a couple of reveals, a couple of, um, you know, things that we haven't really made public before. So hopefully some useful insight as we go through this. Um, it's a it's a very big program of work. Very excited um, to be launching that to market next year. So just in terms of kind of setting the scene, just a couple of slides from me. Um, that we, you know, just to set the scene as to why we we are doing what we are doing as a business. Um, so if you could just skip on um, a slide, please, uh, another one. Um, so one of the first things I did when, um, oh, in fact, no, we'll just run through the agenda. What, you know, I just very, very briefly, why why are these kind of processes that we see? Why do we think that they're broken? Why do I think that our, the CT processes particularly are broken and, and why we think we can change them? We can look at the new technology and I'll spend a good bit of time looking at AlphaTax 360, which is our digital compliance platform and a new kind of way of working that we'll bring to the table next year. Um, so therefore, you know, one of the first things I did when I joined the business, and that was early in 2020, just as lockdown was kicking off, was I went around and spoke to a lot of clients and um, talked to them about what was really holding them up in their CT processes. Why were the processes taking so long? And the thing that I found that was interesting, and it probably will resonate with quite a few of you, was that fundamentally the time that was being kind of wasted, if you like, was not actually time that was being spent doing tax work. Um, if you could just skip on to the next slide, we've got a couple of stats um, that we saw uh, when we kind of did some of that research. Um, and, and that research really was that uh, people were spending um, far too much time, about 44% of the time was spent before you even got to a computation. Um, and, you know, that meant that overall, when we calculated the amount of minutes across our client base, nearly one and a half million minutes per year was being what I would call wasted in terms of just, you know, people doing copy pasting, low value tasks, um, typing stuff out. And, and while certainly we can't foresee a world where all of that massively disappears, we can absolutely see a world where that could be reduced. So we went and spoke to all of the customers and that was the, the one of the biggest themes or probably the biggest theme from speaking to those businesses where they said, you know what, the, the tax part's not so bad. The part where we're really spending that time is all around the data and getting the data in. And I'm sure Ian will see similar challenges when he's working with his customers around, well, why does it just take so long to do some of this stuff? And of course, when we put our MTD hats on and our digital links hat, that hats on for kind of the future, you're just not gonna be able to do some of this stuff anymore. So it's not just a an efficiency problem, it's, a, it's an actual regulatory problem of the future. Um, if we just skip on to the next slide, we then kind of couple that with what we see our tax teams looking at. We know that there's a big tax gap. We know that tax gap sits now at 32 billion. Um, it's coming down slowly and steadily and HMRC are very keen to push that message that it is coming down, but there is still 32 billion of, of unrecovered taxes now. It's probably about half of what Jeremy Hunt would have liked um, to get back last week with his new announcements. Um, we also know that tax teams, and this was a, was a stark stat, was that 93% of tax teams 
aren't going to get any more budget. They'll either remain flat or it will fall. And that's therefore, you know, they can't necessarily employ more staff. Um, but HMRC are coming after them. And as you know, Ian's already said, there's there's a few things on the horizon. There's MTD, there's Pillar 2, um, ESG's gearing up. We're seeing a few things coming around transfer pricing. So fundamentally, tax teams are having to do more with either the same or with less. Um, and, you know, the answer to that, as we see, and we would see this as a tech business, is technology. And that's why we're seeing a lot more focus on tax technology, because it's the only real way to kind of get out of the, the challenges that companies face. Um, so doing a little bit of navel gazing, um, Ian used the term and I quite like it. I spent quite a lot of my job doing navel gazing. Um, just a couple of themes, if you skip forward um, a couple of slides as to what we're um, what we're kind of thinking is going to come in. So new way of working. So the first one, and this kind of comes back to that data point. Everyone at the moment or pretty much everyone at the moment is either insourcing or outsourcing their tax. And what that therefore means is there's this kind of handoff between you know person a and person b where they're asking for information that might be you know where an outsourcer is asking for information from their customers that might be where somebody in an in-house tax team is asking for information uh, from their finance department or from their advisors it can work both ways and we tended to see those processes were incredibly inefficient they're very much driven by email they're very much driven by excel um, and those processes were not working very well and it meant that you know you've got these kind of crunch periods where there was a lot of chasing, a lot of back and forth and a lot of handoffs. And we were kind of trying to work out. And we think that um, in those processes, there were kind of six or seven times was the pretty much the average number of times you get back and forth and back and forth. And that process just wasn't um, wasn't something that customers were getting any value from. As, as we've talked about, there's lots of wasted time. Now, where do we see that going as a business now? You know, and we've seen this happen in other areas of technology. Um, you know, people nowadays, for example, use Teams a lot more than they were using channels like that, um, certainly pre-COVID. And that's only, you know, two and a half, three years ago. Um, what we're now seeing is, is more of a move to kind of those in-app driven um, processes, something that's kind of set up and used as a template basis and something that not only is um, going to reduce the number of kind of human touches that are required to get information back and forth, um, but also a big requirement. We've seen this grow over time pretty steadily is the requirement to get data directly from an ERP system. So we are seeing a move away from those manual processes. We know that those manual processes exist um, and they are very, very prevalent at the moment within tax teams, but certainly something we're seeing and we, we think will happen over the next two, three, five years is a real shift away from any of those kind of manual processes to more kind of technology driven processes. So that's the first kind of navel gazing point that we've got. Um, the second point really um, on the next slide um, is all about, uh, you know, it's an interesting world. I work with a lot of developers in my job. When you work with developers, they work with six or seven different bits of kit every day. They're all provided from different vendors like Atlassian and Microsoft and Slack, and they all work totally seamlessly together. You wouldn't know you're using technology from different vendors, um, but they just work. And that's how, you know, that existence happens. And, and fundamentally developers wouldn't be able to do their jobs without it. Within the world of tax and within the world of finance, you tend to see companies with a variety of different products. So, you know, Alpha Tax being one of them in the CT space and then different tools for VAT, ERP solutions, accounts production solutions. There's lots of different tools and they're fundamentally, they are, you know, point solutions and they're delivering different things, but they don't join up. Um, certainly our view and our one of, one of our really strong views is that these things will start to join up, um, that data will start to move between them in a much more um, API driven fashion um, and therefore you know for example getting data from your accounts into your CT return will not be a case of you know downloading files and doing stuff or manually entering things it will just happen via API so that's certainly something that we're going to see um, in the world of tax significantly over the coming years um, and my final kind of prediction I think um, for uh, this one just on the next slide um, is all about um, that kind of role of so if you just skip forward one um, oh, uh, this one's all around outsourcing and co-sourcing, which is an interesting world, and I'm sure Ian will see, be seeing this as well. Technology at the minute has has really driven this world of insource or outsource. Um, you've got to do one or the other. Um, you say you either kind of you know do all of your tax in your in your tax team internally, or you outsource it to a provider. Now, part of that decision to do that has been driven by technology because technology, as I've just said, is very very siloed. So we are starting to see co-sourcing emerging. We actually know of probably two or three. Um, co-source deals that have actually happened this year where a customer is, is you know, actually genuinely doing a co-source arrangement with their um, advisor. So they're kind of getting the both of, best of both, which means that, you know, the, the tax team can do the parts of the process that make sense for them, but the advisor can also do the parts that make sense for them. That will continue to kind of um, push out into the market as we go. 
Um, and just finally on the on the next slide. Um, yeah, I think I think it's just just yeah. just to interrupt very briefly. I, I think that's a really interesting point in terms of that. I think the operating model conversation around whether you should insource or outsource and what's right for you is the basis for most of our conversations that we're having with clients because there's always going to be bits that are better done in house. But it is that interconnectivity and sometimes the inability to seamlessly pass things back and forth has meant that organizations have just said I'll, oh, I'll just outsource it then or i'll just insource it then and i think we are starting to see groups asking more for could you review this for us or would you be able to prepare it and we'll review it but that only works in a world where we're all using similar platforms or the data is able to move otherwise you're having to reinvent the wheel and we've had too many times where in, in certain jurisdictions, France is a prime example where if we're asked to do a review only service in France, it costs more than a preparing review because we can't trust the data and the calculations and they have to redo it themselves under the, the way that French law works in, in that particular area. So I, I don't disagree at all in terms of that movement, but there needs to be quite a lot happening to make that a, a real viable option from the technology pro provider side, I think. Yeah, and I think it has been it has been down. It's been limited by the technology providers, and it's it's interesting. We're starting to have a lot of conversations where people say, for example, well, we you know we don't want to necessarily have um, we you know we don't want to necessarily invite other people in to provide information into a process because you're going to charge us for them as a user. And actually, I can understand why that people think that because that's always been the case in the last twenty years in tax technology. But no, our view on that is absolutely changing. It's that users should exist for what you know for people that are actually doing tax computations but if you want to go i don't know to your advisor and say you know i need you to do my r d claim that's not a user that person is just inputting information so there's a there's a kind of a bit of a, a shift here that's happening which i think again it's it will take a few years to to really really come to the fore but it's it's hopefully it's it's an interesting way of working um so just moving on then to introduce you to alpha tax 360 so alpha tax as everybody on the call knows probably or most of you do is our kind of CT compliance product. It's used by about 70% of the larger organizations in the UK uh, and Ireland and has been around for a long, long time. And for the last two and a half years, I've been working on a program and we've been working on a program of work at Tax Systems to move that into what we're calling a, a digital compliance platform that's going to be branded as Alpha Tax 360. Excited to say this will launch next year. The first um, tranche of it will launch at the end of Q1. So we are now only about four months away from launch and um, being two and a half years into a program of work and only four months away from launch, I can't tell you how excited I am to actually get this out in the market and being used. Um, and this is kind of how we're seeing things. So we've got three components of that digital compliance platform. Alpha CT will become kind of alpha tax in the cloud, if you like. Um, I've got a couple of slides that will kind of just show you a few bits about that. But fundamentally, that is the same CT compliance engine that people have been using for those 31 years, but moved to the cloud and significantly improved. Um, so we've kept the tax logic identical. So everything you can do in a computation in alpha tax, you can do in alpha CT. Um, so we haven't changed that. The, the feedback we've had from our kind of early pilot clients is that if they understand how to do a comp in alpha tax, they will absolutely understand how to do a comp in, in alpha CT, which is great. Um, but we've made some significant improvements along the way, clearly as a, as a desktop product that's been around for a long time, there are some areas we'd like to improve. Um, and alpha CT has done that. Um, Alpha, that's a product we've had out in the market for about the last three or four years now to do VAT, continues to steadily grow. I'm not the subject of this webinar, but very happy to talk about that as much as anyone would like. And then as I've already talked about, data is the biggest challenge in our view. Uh, how do you get the data in? How do you streamline that process? So we built out a product called AlphaLink. Um, not only does that replace kind of existing methods of data ingestion for Alpha Tax, so we've got things like accounts integration, tax packs that have existed for a long time, but make some significant improvements. The last slide I'll show you is all around that. Um, all of these things are totally in interconnected as well, which is great. And I'll talk about that in the next slide. Um, and, you know, I kind of made the point earlier about kind of connectivity and why we think things need to be connected. Um, we are kind of looking at six kind of core APIs in the product that will be launched over a series of time. But um, these these are kind of really, really interesting um, and, and Russell, just to just to clarify, obviously, yeah, to, for for the um, for the people that aren't aware, the term API, what does it mean, and how does it uh, how is it going to benefit the um, the audience today? It's a very good point. Apologies, I just assume, yeah, no, I spent a lot of my time talking about APIs, so I should explain what I mean. Um, effectively, it's a way of more than one product talking to each other. So it's, for example, if you if you had an accounts production tool that had information in it that you wanted to use in your corporation tax tool, you could just push that data seamlessly without requiring any manual intervention. So it's a it's effectively a way of two applications talking to each other 
and that works bi-directionally um so that's not just necessarily from one place to another it could be then back again um so it's just it's it's a way of uh you know for example for, in, our, in our instance it's getting data from other products that can be used in the comp and then of course if you've got reporting tools for example pushing data to that reporting tool to then surface that elsewhere um so that's kind of what an api is um, in terms of the ones that we will have in the product um there's there's a few here and i won't get into all of the detail but fundamentally you know loading trial balance information is a pretty common task um we want to be able to do that without you know manual intervention um the administration elements so being able to do um, administrative tasks such as you know user rights and uh, creating new comps tax data is a really interesting one where we we have a lot of requirements where people say well, we're building our we've got a whole reporting layer in power bi that we've built out we want to get the data out of alpha ct brilliant we can give you all of that data um, e-filing is always a bugbear for people um, and therefore the ability to file data or file comps to hmrc without manual intervention is a huge time saver so there's a, quite a few in there um, and you know happy to go into more detail at a later stage but fundamentally um, apis are a massive part of our strategy and what we're delivering to the market uh, again fundamentally different to what we've had out there before and what the rest of the market has kind of seen um and just then if we can skip on um just slide because I'm, I'm conscious of time and want to get to some q a just a few things that we've delivered and, and bear in mind that these are you know i only had 15 or so minutes i could talk about this for hours um don't you worry about that um and you can see a few things that we've been working on so the the ui is totally refreshed and this is kind of a just a screenshot from our on ui in fact this is this is really brand new because as a business and you've probably seen from the slides we've totally rebranded as well so as well as building a brand new product we have rebranded our business entirely over the last few months um so this is what the, the product kind of looks like as you can see on the left hand side and in the main body of the screen you've got the computation so the computation is is as it was um but it's just been refreshed one of the you know one of the many things, as I said, as we've been building this out is, is making significant improvements. Uh, the diagnostics is one of those areas where it was spending, people were spending a lot of time going back and forth and back and forth doing diagnostics. We've now built them in real time alongside the comp so you can diagnose as you go. Um, and that will cut, you know, that might only cut five or 10 minutes out of a particular comp. But when you're doing a volume of comps, um, it can kind of result in some real time savings. Um, On to the next slide. Um, and that's, as I've just said, it's one of the real big bugbears. Um, e-filing is one of the areas we know particularly at uh, busy periods at year ends we know for example going back to March people were spending hours sit sitting there clicking submit and then getting rejections from HMRC because HMRC's servers aren't up to the task um, and we know that cost so I think that we the record we heard from a customer was 700 attempts at a retry on submission day which is um, mind-boggling uh, we totally refreshed how the e-filing works we've made it a lot quicker to assemble your e-filing package I think we've removed about two thirds of the process um but we've also built it in such a way that you can kind of submit and then it will automatically repoll so even if it does take five hours for the submission to get through to hmrc we'll continually retry in the background not requiring users to sit there and repeatedly press go which is um you know a real time saver and on to the very last one because i've only got one minute left um this is something that's fundamentally different and this is probably one of the real big areas where people have been getting benefits and getting excited in the early stages um We've got something we call questionnaires, which is part of our Alpha Link product. What that allows you to do is actually request data from somebody outside of the system. So a good example would be, you know, I'm I'm a tax user. I want someone in my finance team to provide me a schedule of leased cars because I don't have that information. I can just send a link, um, a user controlled link to that person in finance. They can go in and they can provide that information. It will flow directly into the comp. So as I've said, that whole process around email and Excel will all disappear over time. Um, and this is something that's really is a game changer in terms of how stuff will will kind of flow into the computation. So the questionnaires, again, you know, we've done demos of this that will last an hour just to delve into questionnaires and how they might work. But fundamentally, allowing a user to get information into the computations in a much, much better way, um, solving that kind of big data challenge that we know is out there and can gather other things like files and, and other things like that. Anyway, we're at 1025. I said I wouldn't talk um, over my allotted time, Ian. So I think from that we can jump into some Q and A. Yeah, we've, we've we've had a couple of questions through Russell, so I'll, I'll get to those in a second. It's just one from me, just before we jump into those. Um, you mentioned something. I guess the 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 thought process or the vision of moving to the cloud is you talked about that co-sourcing and that ability for clients to do bits and then potentially advisors to do bits. Talk to us a little bit in terms of how that would work for argument's sake if a client is now. A, a BDO client, and um, they also have a, a copy of your software. 
how yeah. would how are you going to see that's going to work in terms of data moving seamlessly between two different organizations uh, uh, yeah exactly and that is that's part of what we we think is entirely new so exactly, as you say they will have their con they'll continue to have their license themselves so they will be able to log in as as they kind of do now but of course in a, in a cloud environment rather than going into the desktop product but what you can do in the solution is you can add a user you can add a user with any email address so i could you know they could add ian.bowden at bdo.co.uk and they could then send you a request and they and you would then get an email in your inbox with a you know a specific link to you with the specific things that you've been asked so that you know you're not sending someone full access to a comp you're not sending them access to you know the keys to the kingdom you can very be very very specific you could even be down to i want you to provide one value for one cell in one comp for one period it's that specific um, and what that therefore means is that rather than having to go outside of the system to do all of that and then have an email save that email down as evidence and all the rest of it you can fundamentally it's just a different way of working you could then go you know click a link provide that number in the in the in the product it will flow directly into the comp and of course all of that's trapped in an audit trail so they can see Ian Bowden at BDO has provided that figure on that date at that time. So it's a, it is a fundamental shift, but we think it's a much better way of working. And, and for some time, we've had various conversations with auditors around you know, how transparent do businesses want to be? Do you see this as, a, as an opportunity? Do you, can you see organisations opening this up to HMRC? HMRC could be a stretch, but there's nothing stopping them. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love it. Um, I, you know, from my point of view, it should be, it could be as, as much as that, you know, opening, really opening up the uh, the car bonnet to say, here you go, have a look at our stuff and go in and, you know, prove that there was a, you know, a digital audit trail of this information coming direct from ERP into the cells in the comp that wasn't manually manipulated on the way. So I think that's where we're going to get to over time. Um, I'd love to say, I think it will happen sooner, um, but very happy if I've got a customer on the call that wants to, you know, open up everything to HMRC, we'd be glad to do it with them. I think uh, that'll be an interesting conversation. <laughs> uh, we have had a we have had a couple of questions through, um, and one is a bit more technical in terms of what the product is capable of doing. So, uh, thank you, David, for for this question. Can the new AlphaTac CT be used for year end reporting? It's one of David's special subjects, actually, uh, including setting up offshore entities that will not be within the charge of UK CT and only included for year end purposes. So we are. So there's a couple of concepts that exist within AlphaTax that will make its way over. So non AlphaTax entities, effectively, is, is something that will make its way into to cloud. It's actually something we're exploring quite a lot at the moment in in light of Pillar Two, because clearly with Pillar Two you're going to need to be going to get information from entities that you wouldn't otherwise have to with kind of regular UK CT. Um, so I would probably say, um, I know it's a bit of a politician's answer, but watch this space slightly on that one. Um, fundamentally, anything that exists in AlphaTax will shift its way over to cloud in time. Um, but there actually will be a few areas where we will improve that um, kind of as we go through. So very happy. If there's a couple of specific examples you want to run through, it'd be really good to, um, to have a chat. So happy to pick that one up separately. Okay, and um, has anybody else got any um, questions coming through? If not, I think uh, we will thank Russell for, oh, we have got one one very, very quick one. Russell, you've got 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, JD Edwards is an ERP system. Will AlphaLink pull data from the ERP system? Uh, not from day one necessarily, but that is something that, you know, as a business we've been looking through um, more specifically as to exactly how we pull things. Um, so it's, it is on our roadmap. It's something we're looking to do over time, but not from day one. But the idea is that you'll be able to get things in a much more sensible way once you do have stuff out of JD Edwards anyway. Yeah, and sometimes it's worth exploring some of the standard GPI, um, APIs that come out of JD Edwards as well. Oracle has some pretty good um, extract capabilities and stuff from there. So um, we are at time. I promise we'd finish bang on time. It is 10.30. Thank you ever so much for joining today. If you, if anybody does have any topics that they would like us to cover in future sessions, please do, please do let us know. We will send a note round after this session offering a, a deeper dive. If you want to hear more from Russell and see a bit more of the technology, we're happy to facilitate that conversation later in the month. Um, but that's it from me. And I'll just say thanks very much. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks, Rob.